hi everyone welcome to my channel so today we will see how to do aspect based sentiment analysis using gpt3 i have made earlier one video related to aspect based sentiment analysis using the bird based library but what happens when that pre trained bird based library is not working good on your data set or the kind of problem that you are working on then you got option to fine tune that particular model but anything that you want to fine tune let's say the libraries like uh, bird you need at least few hundred examples let's say 100 to 500 examples and you might not have those examples then this is where we could use the models like gpt3 to solve your particular problem and today we will see how can we solve aspect based sentiment analysis using gpt3 and um, you know i have already made video related to uh, gpt3 like uh, one of the video was related to some introductory or introduction to gpt3 where we talk about you know how to design a gpt3 prompt nothing but the input to gpt3 and then finally once we have a working prompt then how to take that prompt and integrate with your python code so that's something we have already seen so today we will focus more on a specific to the aspect based sentiment analysis okay so what is aspect based sentiment analysis aspect based sentiment analysis is rather than looking at the overall sentiment of let's say your review you're going to look at the specific aspect of your product or service and try to understand the sentiment of users towards that aspect for example if you look at this example where a review for the mobile which says a camera quality is very good but the battery drains fast now here there are two aspect that user is talking about one is the camera quality other one is the battery and user is happy with the camera quality but uh, user is complaining about the battery and this information is very much important for your product team or to you know see what works for uh, you know what love user likes and what user dislikes so that you can take those inputs and improve your uh, project or product or services so that's what we're going to see how to do with the uh, gpt3 this kind of thing so i have a couple of reviews that i took it from let's say amazon or from, from google reviews and then i am going to you know experiment with certain instruction or input to gpt3 and we will see what kind of output we get and we will try to see how do how should we modify our prompt so that we get the desired output that what we are looking for okay so we going to do that experiment in gpt3 playground here so gpt3 playground is uh, something that you know without writing any code you can first check the feasibility of the gpt3 solution you can write some instruction to gpt3 here in this box you know you can give some examples to gpt3 and see whether gpt3 is able to produce good results on your test data and right side you could see some of the parameters and the uh, model related stuff so here you could see we are selecting gpt3 model called text da vinci and that particular version the only important parameter that i want to touch here is the temperature so temperature is the parameter which control the randomness or you can call it the deterministic nature of your model it can take value between 0 and 1 so let me tell you when it goes towards the 0 and when temperature value is go towards the 1 let's take an example where you know uh let's take you want to generate jokes so you want to ask gpt3 to write jokes for you in that case whenever you ask gpt3 to produce the joke you want every time new joke to be produced that's come the randomness or more generative or uh, you know uh, indeterministic power of the, uh, that model because you want new things to come every time you run the same thing but there are some problem statement let's say the aspect based sentiment analysis if i give this input to the gpt3 and ask to produce the aspect based sentiment analysis for this no matter how many times i run i want to produce the same result so here randomness is almost zero so that's what that parameter controls so we will put it zero because every time we run gpt3 for a same example we expect the same output right that's what uh, the deterministic nature of your model other than that we can start you know experiment with it so let's you know take this particular prompt here and let's copy this particular prompt and paste it in here so you could see what we have here we have an instruction for gpt3 so gpt3 requires two things one is the instruction 
the kind of work that we want to uh, you know the kind of task we are expecting that gpt3 should complete for us and then you can give an example on which gpt3 will work upon or you can call it as a test example and you could see we haven't given any training example or kind of sample example to gpt3 we just gave an instruction we are saying that extract positive and negative aspects from the text and we are not at all telling what is the aspect what do you mean by positive we are not giving any example and we simply giving a test example and ask gpt3 to perform on it so let's run this particular example in the bottom you could find a submit button if you click that button this request will submit to gpt3 and you could say gpt3 has produced an output so gpt3 found some of the positive aspects and some of the negative aspect with respect to whatever the review we have given here you could see the beautiful design is a positive aspect whereas the price is becoming a negative aspect now this is where you when you build a product using gpt3 you need to experiment you need to see whether you are getting the desired output or not if you are not happy with the quality of the output you might want to change the instruction or give some examples to gpt3 so let's try to give an example and let's see how this gpt3 produces the output so let's uh, go to the you know next prompt and we will try to do this prompt but before that let's copy this first example and put it somewhere so i'm going to put it here so that if you want to you know reference back it we can go and check now here if you see we are giving instruction and some example and the expected output let's copy this particular thing so we are giving an instruction saying that extract aspect opinion pairs from the text and we give an one example to gpt3 we say that if this is an example of review we are expecting positive aspect list and the negative aspect list like this and this is a separator a delimiter which separates our uh, you know input to gpt3 and then we can give our sample example here now let's test it on some different review let's copy this particular review and let's see how it produces the output so this become our test example what i'm doing i'm you know clicking enter so that cursor goes to next line and then i submit the request now let's see what happens okay now you could see this output is different from what we got earlier because we have given our expectation we have explained on the gpt that i expect the outputs to be separated by two things positive and negative and then i should get the list of aspect falling here list of aspect falling here so in this particular example we could see the camera quality is identified as a positive whereas the battery life is identified as a negative right and you could see, also see the generative nature of the uh, this particular thing instead of battery it is saying the battery life as an aspect now let's test it on different example let's take this example and see what happens now you could see i am just replacing our test example here but overall input to gpt3 remains the same because this particular thing a prompt is telling gpt3 instruction and a sample example okay let's now run this particular example and see what output we get we could see it again did the good job it separated this kind of string now what if even after giving one example the gpt3 couldn't produce a proper result then you could add one more example let's treat this example as a part of the gpt3 sample example so let's you know let's make it like similar nature like this and then we can separate it now again delimiter to make sure that we separate these examples now gpt3 has a two examples to learn from it this is how you can add multiple examples to gpt3 if gpt3 is not performing with let's say one or two example now let's say if you have two examples try to test on some different review let's take some uh, you know bigger review now i think this is related to the apple okay let's take this one this is related to some hotel review and we will see how does gpt3 produce again same thing i'm clicking on a next line as a cursor here and submitting the instruction oh sorry submitting that particular prompt and you could see from this review 
it has find out that the you could see the rooms are quite good it means room aspect of their hotel that customer is positive about but there are certain negative aspect the customer is talking about one is the service you could see here right overall staff and the value for the money this is how you give instruction multiple examples and get the output now what if you are expecting output in some different format not not kind of this format so let's say we we are expecting output in some different format something like this where you expect your output is a aspect and the opinion what user is saying okay so before that let me copy uh, did i let me do control z and let's copy this particular prompt here if you want we can have a look again right maybe specifically this particular output and let's copy a new prompt now so here also we are giving the same instruction but now the expected output we define different way instead of just defining you know the aspect as a positive negative separated let's say we want to get both the thing aspect and the opinion in this format a kind of pair aspect and opinion once we give this expectation let's test it on a let's test it on that same example here whether we get the desired output or not going to the next line and now submitting request we could see it is able to predict rooms quite good because that's what user says so you have an aspect you also have an opinion about that aspect service pathetic and i think uh, front office stuff not customer friendly if you could get such information from your reviews you know that can help you improve your product and services because you directly know what things people like what things people don't like and you also have a reason behind it right so this is quite useful uh, in terms of problem statement whether your services providing as a kind of hotel or either it could be related to you know electronic devices or it could be anything so this was the one structure you could do what if you want to do something else let's say the next prompt you could think of you know you want aspect and its opinion but also separated by positive and negative so you could provide that particular thing and let me remove this thing and let's put the same instruction same example but the output format we specify differently that we are expecting this aspect opinion pair to be separated by positive and negative sentiment right and now let's test it so maybe let's test it on something else and once i come to the next line let's submit a request okay you could see it couldn't perform well on this particular review it couldn't give the output like this way it means that there is a scope to add one more example we just added one example here right so maybe we need to add one or two example to see whether we can get the desired output for that now if it not perform on this example let's see whether it can perf uh, perform good on this other example let's take this example which we tried earlier right and let's submit okay with this example you could see it is able to do this particular thing it is able to separate positive negative thing and you have both the thing aspect and the opinion maybe so when you try on a couple of example you need to see what's different in that example so that you can add that example to your prompt because currently you could see we have just added one example so you could add one or two more examples to get the better result kind of thing right let's try this one and how it performs okay it couldn't find anything negative but it has identified all the positive aspect and their opinion here so it does work pretty good just with one instruction and the one example right that's the power of gpt3 if you could do same thing with the other models like bird you might require few hundred examples to do the similar kind of stuff now once you have this thing right you have some prompt you know how to you know 
provide input to GPT-3 and how to pass a test example, you need to integrate this thing in your code so that your application can use this thing. So if you go here, if you see view code section, you can click on that view code section and you get the same prompt in a programmatic form, which you can integrate in your Python code. So when you integrate, you make sure that this part become fixed in your prompt and this particular part, which is nothing but your test example, get dynamically uh, inserted into that particular prompt. And if you wonder how to do that particular thing, I have already made a video for that. So this video here, learn how to integrate GPT-3 prompt into Python is talking about the same thing. There I have shown, once you do your experimentation with the GPT-3 in the playground, how to take your experiment, nothing but this particular prompt code, and then integrate with your Python. So you can go and check that video. And I think uh, uh, that's that's enough. This particular video is enough to show you, you know, how to integrate these things. So I hope you found this video useful. So I just wanted to show you actually how to experiment with GPT-3, how to, you know, so we did experiment mostly with example, but you could try changing this instruction text and you will see how changing the instruction, the capabilities of GPT-3 output or the format of GPT-3, you know, changes. So this is more of like an experimentation that you need to do with respect to uh, whatever the problem that you are solving. So let me know if you have any doubts related to GPT-3 or any other things what we discuss here. Uh, put that thing in comment so uh, I can answer there. And if you have any suggestions for me for the next video related to even GPT-3 overall natural language processing, that also you, uh, you could mention. And if you found this video useful, do subscribe to my channel. I mostly do, uh, you know, create videos related to natural language processing, freelancing, and my video is mostly related to the project-based learning. So I pick up one particular topic and, you know, try to solve that uh, problem that you, know, you could directly use on your job or even you could uh, take that skill and work as an individual freelancer. Okay. Thank you very much.